These are the three most useful color mixing charts you can make. They will help you understand watercolor mixing better than anything else. In this video, you'll learn how to mix clean, saturated colors. Then I'll show you how to neutralize those colors to get more realistic hues. Plus, I have the best exercise to help you improve your color mixing skills and find your favorite color mixes. All you need to make these charts is your six split primary colors, a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red, and a warm and cool blue. I use the Daniel Smith Essentials set, but other brands have similar sets. Even if you don't have a split primary mixing set, chances are you already have similar colors on your palette. The Daniel Smith set includes a color chart and some color mixing tips. These are helpful, but you'll learn so much more by making your own color mixing charts. You can download a template for the color charts in the video description. I made them easy to trace so you can transfer them to your watercolor paper. I recommend making these color charts on your favorite watercolor paper, even if it's the expensive stuff. Paper quality can greatly affect how your colors look. Trust me, I painted my first color charts on cheap paper and they look awful. These color charts will be most useful if they match the paper you typically paint on. I'm mixing on my large porcelain palette today so you can see what I'm doing. I'm squeezing out fresh paints from the tube so I'm certain my colors are clean. If you're mixing with pan paints, pre-wet them to activate your paint. The first chart you should make to understand color mixing is a warm triad color wheel and a cool triad color wheel. A triad is simply three primary colors. The warm triad includes my warm yellow, New Gamboge, warm red, Pyrrole Scarlet, and warm blue, French Ultramarine. The cool triad has my cool yellow, Hansa Yellow Light, cool red, Quinacridone Rose, and cool blue, Phthalo Blue. By making a warm and a cool version, you can see how your different primary colors mix. When you're mixing the secondary colors, it's not a 50-50 mix. The red or blue can easily overpower the yellow. It's best to start with the weaker color and slowly add the stronger color until you get the secondary color you want. For the tertiary colors, I'm gonna again start with the lighter color and mix in more of the secondary color until I get that intermediate color. Also, don't add too much water to your mix. You wanna create a nice saturated color for your color wheel. You may wanna sample your color on an extra scrap of paper before putting it on your color wheel. I'm painting just inside the lines so my colors won't bleed together while I'm painting and I can erase the pencil lines if I want later. What is most important to notice about these two color wheels is where you get the cleanest, most saturated colors. On the warm triad, you get beautiful oranges mixed from warm red and warm yellow. On the cool triad, you get beautiful bright greens mixed from cool yellow and cool blue. Neither of these triads makes good purples, but I'll show you how to get gorgeous purples in a moment. Now you might be wondering how do you get a bright red, yellow, or blue from these colors? When using split primaries, you can mix the two different primaries together to get the mixed primary hue. That is the red, blue, and yellow you typically think of. Please subscribe to my channel for more watercolor tips and tutorials. To mix the cleanest, most saturated secondary and tertiary colors, we need to merge these two color wheels together. We'll take the best of both, the oranges from the warm triad and the greens from the cool triad and put them on our split primary color wheel. That way we can see the range of clean oranges and greens we can mix. We'll look at purple in a moment. Now, a typical color wheel has 12 sections. A split primary has 15 sections to accommodate two versions of each primary color. If you don't want to mess around with a compass and a protractor, you can download a 15 section color wheel in the video description. It's on page two of the template that I made for you. 
Okay, let's look at the purples. Remember, they all looked rather dull on the warm triad and the cool triad. That's because the cleanest purples come from mixing a cool red and a warm blue. When we add those last two primaries to our color wheel, we can mix a lovely range of saturated purples. So this split primary color chart is your recipe card for mixing clean, vivid colors. If you want a bright orange, use warm red and warm yellow. Bright green, use cool yellow and cool blue. Bright purple, use a cool red and a warm blue. But what about mixing more natural, realistic colors for landscapes or florals or animals? You know, all the things that we love to paint with watercolor? Well, you need to be able to create a wider range of colors. Knowing how to neutralize or desaturate colors is an essential color mixing skill. Let me show you how it's done. To get a more natural green, instead of mixing cool blue with cool yellow, we can mix it with warm yellow. Because the warm yellow leans towards orange, which is the complementary color to blue, it will create a desaturated green. I think the best way to see the full range of colors you can mix is to make secondary color mixing charts. You may have seen other artists make one large mixing chart of all their colors. I've made those in the past too. I think it's far more useful to make separate charts that show the range of greens, oranges, and purples that you can mix from just two color mixes. My favorite way to practice color mixing is a process I learned from Sarah Burns. I first used her method to learn how to mix my gouache paints. The same method can be used with watercolors. I'll link to her video below. Like Sarah, I believe you should spend less time drawing tedious charts and more time actually mixing colors. This is the best exercise to improve your color mixing skills. To make these secondary color charts, I use a quilting ruler to draw lines 3 quarters of an inch apart on a 10 by 14 inch piece of paper. Then I cut it into four pieces. I love this size because it's easy to pull out and reference while I'm painting. For the green chart, I want to see what happens when I mix various yellows and blues. I'll abbreviate the paint names to save space. I'm starting with my first yellow on the left side, and then on the right side I'm listing my two blues plus another green that I like to mix with. Then I'll repeat that for my other yellows with the same list of blues and greens. Then it's time to mix. I'll start with pure yellow and paint a swatch of that first. Then I'm going to slowly add the blue one touch at a time and swatch each mix until I get about a 50-50 mix in the middle. I'll keep adding more blue until I get to the end of the row and my color is almost pure blue. I'll repeat that process for the rest of the green mixes. This is such an amazing way to see all the greens you can mix from just a few colors. The reason I love Sarah's method so much is it helps you practice the mechanics of mixing. Instead of mixing a single in-between color, you learn how to control your color mix and push or pull it toward one color or another. That is the skill you need to confidently mix colors on the fly while you're painting. On the orange mixing chart, I mixed red and yellow colors, On the purple mixing chart, I mixed red and blue colors. I think where this type of color chart really shines is when you want to try a new color on your palette. You can quickly add to this chart and see how the new color mixes with your existing colors. So think of these like living color charts. Update them whenever you add a new color to your palette. If you run out of space, you can easily make another chart to add to your collection. 
In theory, you can mix any color from a split primary color palette. But if you don't want to spend all of your time mixing colors, you'll probably want to add some convenience colors to your palette. Those are colors that are hard to mix reliably or colors that will give you a head start on mixing. Check out my limited color palette video next for a short list of the best colors to mix in with your split primary colors. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.